It is a beautiful snowy day here in Crested Butte. And because of that, I thought we'd talk a little bit about ski technology. And more specifically, the bindings that um, has made skiing easier, more fun, more popular, um, safer, and um, I have a number of different examples here that I think show pretty good advancements in the um, technology of ski bindings. So we start off here with this unnamed pair. I'm guessing, guessing that they are from the 1920s. And, um, they've got a bear trap situation on them. And as you can see, the cables run on the side of the ski right here, which you would think would be, and there are no edges, but um, you would think that would really mess up your turns and um, certainly be dragging on the snow. This next pair is a pair of 10th Mountain Division skis, also with a bear trap binding, um, but a little bit more advanced. And um, they have this heel spring situation here and a good um, metal clip for the boot to go in. Still stuff on the sides, but um, next we go still to the um, bear trap, but um, we have um, a releasable toe piece, and um, these are heart skis, I'm thinking from the late 50s, early 60s. Um, absolutely zero for the heel to grip on other than the cable. Um, the next one here is a pair of Zermont skis made by Sears and Roebuck. And um, it's still just a um, bear trap, but they are starting to put springs in them, the releasable toe, and, um, and some decent edges as well. Um, so we have an example here from Tyrolia of the Bear Trap. Um, Gipron, an Italian company. And then Marker, first Marker binding that I own. And um, these are Honenkamm skis, also made by Sears. Um, and then it was at this point that I think a major, probably the biggest um, technological advance happened, and that was the Cubco binding. This is the Cubco, and um, it's a releasable heel piece, and we no longer have the cables uh, attached to the side of the skis. Um, I also own another a pair of Miller bindings that I think were around about the same time as those Cubcos. Um, they're new old stock. They made in the USA, um, releasable heel, oh, Japan. <laughs> Anyways, um, these, I still have the, the directions to how to mount these because that was such a new thing. Um, it's the only American binding used in the Olympics, they say. And here is the jig. Okay, moving on. Um, then we um, get to uh, the Rotomat by Marker. This Rotomat survived for, I think it was close to 50 years, um, where they were um, using it as their main heel piece. Um, looked very technologically advanced in 
the 60s, but not so much um, in the odds, <laughs> or in uh, maybe uh, the 90s they stopped making everything. Anyways, um, moving on, um, we have um, my first example of a look binding, and uh, these were super popular. You can see the big leather straps, because um, you had to tether your binding or your ski to your foot. Um, and then we have right here, the VR-17, Dina Meek. These were Jean-Claude Kiles. Um, not the specific skis, but certainly the model. He used the um, VR-17 and made them famous. And uh, we have some Solomons on here. Uh, the the old 444. Um, I think these were a revolutionary binding. We made a ton of them. Um, and then we come on over here to another marker with a rotomat very similar to this rotomat, and yet this was, um, you know, 20 years after. Um, and here we have the very first that I know of, ski brake, and it was separate from the binding, but this flap would, would flap down when your ski came out, and it would make the, the ski roll and uh, allow it to come to a stop. Then we have um, in, uh, a Solomon here, and this is one of the earlier examples of an integrated ski brake. And uh, certainly made things a lot easier getting in and out of. Uh, that's mid to late 70s. And then I thought I'd just give an example of the modern binding. And these are some 2019 Solomons that I have on a pair of romp skis here made here in Crested Butte. They're 118 underfoot. So um, there are some relatively wide patter skis. They're really nice um, binding on them. So we've come a long way um, from leather straps to this. Um, I have a lot more examples, but I thought that these were relatively good examples of the advancement and uh, how much more fun skiing probably is now in comparison to the days when you would strap your feet into these things and just pray. <laughs> Anyways, um, from Crest to Butte, this is Get Bent Blacksmithing Studios. Thank you very much.